there, fellow Mojave Wasteland Wanderers. Today we're going to visit Nellis Air Force Base and Gunnery Range. Well, not in person anyway, as the base was not able to extend an invitation to us at this time. But that's okay, because we have lots of information we've researched, as well as images other Wastelanders who were able to visit the base were happy to share with us. Right now, I'm about five miles north of the base. As you can see, it's exactly where it is in the game, just about 15 miles northeast of metropolitan Las Vegas and nestled in those mountains back there. Nellis Air Force Base is an active U.S. military installation and you need special permission to visit. Please respect their security and keep your distance like I'm doing now if you stop by to get a glimpse of this iconic location. Now, they do host an annual open house and air show where you can see all kinds of aircraft and learn all about the base. It's called Aviation Nation. Check out their website for more information as the dates vary from year to year. Unfortunately, we just missed it this year. But you know, come to think of it, I've heard it through the grapevine that there might be a secret way to pay the base a visit if you're fast and tough. Well, being a highly decorated possum rank pioneer scout, I'm certainly both of those things, so let's put it to the test. Come on! In the game, just as in the real world, you'll see warning signs posted all over advising you of the fact it is unlawful to enter the base without permission from the installation commander. Please respect these warnings for your safety and the security of the base. In the game, you can follow railroad tracks that lead to a hidden train tunnel, <laughs> assuming you survive the artillery barrage as you're quite an unwelcome visitor. Now the tracks portrayed in the game do indeed have real world significance, but not regarding Nellis Air Force Base. In fact, as you can see from the satellite image, there are no tracks around Nellis Air Force Base at all. There is a Walmart market where we're walking right now. Boy, I wish there was one here because I could sure use water right now and some of those marshmallow squares. Oh <laughs> man, those are good. Um, but if you're lucky enough to survive the hike in the game, you'll come to the secret tunnel. But it's not here. So let's go find out where it actually is in the real world. Okay, so kidding aside, there's no real world secret train tunnel that leads to the base, so don't go looking for one. In fact, the tunnels that inspired the secret passage in the game are actually historic railway tunnels built for the construction of the Hoover Dam quite far south of Nellis on the coast of Lake Mead. Just before you enter the Lake Mead National Recreation Area, you'll notice a visitor center to your right. Just below that is a trailhead for the historic railroad trail. The 3.7 mile trail follows the route used by various trains to move stone and construction materials to and from the Hoover Dam during its construction. The trail offers spectacular views of Lake Mead and the surrounding areas and has a number of informative stations where you can learn all about the railroad activity that took place here, the wildlife that inhabits the area, and all about Lake Mead. If you're visiting Lake Mead and Hoover Dam, be sure to check out this awesome trail and get a unique perspective of the lake and the Hoover Dam construction project. You won't regret it. But be sure to take plenty of water if walking it in the summertime as it can get pretty hot. And in case you need to know just how hot it is, there's a convenient thermometer right at the trailhead. Be sure to pay attention to that. So let's get back to Nellis Air Force Base. Shortly after the birth of aviation and following World War I, where the application of air power was successfully put to the test, 
Captain Lowell H. Smith and Sergeant William B. Whitefield were tasked with surveying areas for potential landing sites for the new air technology. In 1929, a short dirt runway complete with a small water tower and a little shack to support the operations of the Strip popped up just north of Las Vegas and was first used by Western Air Express who held the mail contract. In the 1930s, the airstrip, which had then been renamed McCarran Airfield, was used to train pilots for the Army Air Corps. Then, after the invasion of Poland by Nazi Germany in 1939, an artillery range was built outside of the town of Tonopah, Nevada, which is about 211 miles north of Las Vegas immediately after. A short time later, the Tonopah area was transferred to the War Department on October 29, 1940. Now we'll talk a little bit more about Tonopah, Nevada when we cover the Big Empty. No spoilers, but I wanted to show it to you now because it is part of the Nellis Test Range but very far north from Nellis Air Force Base. Now as you walk around Tonopah, you'll see things that connect it to the Nellis Air Force Base, including this mural. Now what does that remind you of, folks? Yep, the in-game mural down at the base. But we'll get a look at that from our favorite wasteland photographer, the Lucky 30 Kate, a little later. In 1941, Air Corps Major David Schlatter then surveyed the Las Vegas airstrip and determined that because of the ideal flying conditions, the perfect weather, and being considerably inland from the Pacific coastline, making it highly defensible, Schlatter determined the location to be ideal for a major airbase, and soon after, the city of Las Vegas purchased the airfield for just $10 and within days began leasing it to the U.S. Army. Construction of the base began in 1941 and soon became the location of the 79th Air Base Group commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Martinus Stenseth. And in no time at all, it was gearing up to be a major training facility for pilots and gunners. The airfield became the Las Vegas Army Airfield and would go on to play a critical role in the air power of World War II. It became active for flight training on December 20, 1941 and gunnery training in January of 1942. Flight and gunner training was centered around the B-17 Flying Fortress with an initial class of about 600 gunnery students and about 215 co-pilot trainees. That many trained about every five weeks and by the height of the war, the base had trained more than 55,000 B-17 gunners. Other training aircraft included the B-24 Liberator and the B-40 Flying Fortress. In March of 1945, the B-29 had become a critical strategic bomber and training switched over to accommodate the aircraft. By this time, the base population averaged 11,000 officers and enlisted personnel, which included about 4,500 students. When World War II ended in 1945, the base was put into standby status in December of 1946. Now speaking of B-29s, all of us adventurous wastelanders are familiar with that aircraft for one reason in particular. The one we're tasked to get off the bottom of Lake Mead by the boomers at Nellis. If you thought that was only make-believe for the game, guess again. On July 21, 1948, a B-29 Superfortress doing high-altitude testing did indeed crash in the lake due to a faulty altimeter. The plane was part of the Sun Tracker Project, a Cold War-era upper atmospheric research project to test guidance systems for intercontinental ballistic missiles in which the Sun was used for positioning and direction of the missiles while in flight. After descending to about 300 feet above the surface of the lake, the extremely bright conditions, combined with the faulty altimeter, resulted in the pilot unable to determine how dangerously close the plane was to the surface, resulting in the crash. Fortunately, the crew survived and were rescued and only had minor injuries. Because the project was secret, the incident and the location of the wreck were not made public for another 50 years. In recent times, the crash site has become a favorite diving spot and the National Park Service has lots of informative information about the site, as well as the fascinating history behind the crash. To find out more, visit their website at nps.gov. Here's the link. In 1948, after the United States Air Force was created, 
The base was renamed the Las Vegas Air Force Base and became a sub-installation of Williams Air Force Base located in nearby Arizona. And it became a training center for P-51 Mustang fighters. Then, in May of 1949, the Las Vegas Air Force Base Aircraft Gunnery School opened, continuing the base's already rich history of pilot and gunnery training. On April 30, 1950, the base was renamed once again, this time to Nellis Air Force Base, which is how we know it today, and named in honor of William Harold Nellis, who flew 70 World War II missions. The refurbished base hosted its first base chapel and even a movie theater, which were great escapes for the airmen serving at the base. In 1956, the 3595th Air Demonstration Flight was assigned to the base. Don't recognize that name? Well, you might recognize the other name they go by, the Thunderbirds. In 1965, Nellis opened a U.S. Air Force medical facility dedicated to the care of the base personnel and their dependents, as well as 3,000-some retired personnel. In more modern times, the base was redesignated as the U.S. Air Force Fighter Weapons Center and was then changed to the U.S. Air Force Warfare Center in October of 2005. Today, the base continues its tradition of highly specialized weapons and aircraft training with such famous operations as Red and Green Flag, which are tactical fighter training operations. Now, if you want a first-hand glimpse of this amazing base and to learn more about its rich history and its place in the history of Las Vegas, you definitely want to come out and visit when they have their Aviation Nation event. Again, it's an open house, open to the public, where you can come on the base, visit with personnel, learn all about the aircraft and the gunnery training, everything this base has contributed to preserving our freedom, our safety, and our nation. Now, even though we couldn't take you on a base tour personally for this episode, we can share some images of it courtesy of our good friend and awesome Mojave Wasteland photographer, the Lucky 30 Kate, who was fortunate enough to visit the base several years ago. Take it away, Kate! Air Force!